Welcome to Ina Tiger's News. For this, our final four newscast of the school year. I'm Alexis Richer. And I'm Abby Garrett. And of course we're happy you've joined us for the news we've been following for you. Powered by a solid triumph in California, Hillary Clinton declared victory in her year-long battle for the heart of the Democratic Party, seizing her place in history and setting out on the difficult task of fusing a fractured party to confront Donald Trump. Clinton cruised to easy victories in four of the six state contests on Tuesday. With each win, she further solidified Senator Bernie Sanders' defeat and dashed his already slim chances of using the last night of Senate contest to refuel, refuel his flagging bid. The much-needed winning streak allowed Clinton to celebrate her long-sought milestone, the first woman poised to lead a major political party's presidential ticket. Standing before a flag-waving crowd in Brooklyn, the former Secretary of State soaked up the cheers and beamed. Donald Trump labored to convince a fellow Republicans that he can broaden his appeal and move beyond controversy, tamping down his caustic attacks and divisive remarks in a noticeably muted speech after his final presidential primary wins. Trump's pitch came on one of the toughest days of his unpredictable campaign, as top Republican leaders and donors denounced as racist and troubling his comments about a federal judge's ethnicity. House Speaker Paul Ryan said Tuesday that Donald Trump's comments about a U.S.-born judge of Mexican heritage are the textbook definition of a racist comment. But the GOP's top elected official said he still backs Trump for president. I disavow these requirements. I regret those comments that he made. I don't think claiming a person can't do their job because of their race is sort of like the textbook definition of a racist comment. Ryan's comments highlight acute GOP divisions around Trump's candidacy as Republicans squirm over what may be the billionaire's most outrageous stance to date. The claim that U.S. District Judge Gonzalo Curiel can't preside fairly over a case involving Trump University because the judge is out of Mexican heritage and Trump wants to build a wall around the U.S. and Mexico. Congress on Tuesday sent President Barack Obama a sweeping bill that would for the first time regulate tens of thousands of toxic chemicals in everyday products, from household cleaners to clothing and furniture. In a rare display of bipartisanship in an election year, the Senate backed the measure on a voice vote after Republicans and Democrats spoke enthusiastically about the legislation. Backers of the bill said it would clear up a hodgepodge of state rules and update and improve a toxic chemicals law that has remained unchanged for 40 years. The Senate vote follows approval in the House last month. Obama is expected to sign the measure. The federal death penalty trial of a white man charged with shooting and killing nine black parishioners during a Bible study at their Charleston church will be held in November, a judge announced Tuesday. Chief U.S. District, District Judge Richard Gergel set November 7th to begin selecting jurors for the federal trial of Dylan Roof, 22, who faces numerous counts, including hate crimes in the June 17 shootings at Emmanuel AME Church. That's about two months before Roof's state death penalty trial. Roof faces nine counts of murder in state court in a trial set to begin in January. In Egypt Air aircraft, that made an emergency landing on Wednesday in Uzbekistan following a bomb threat has resumed its flight to Beijing, Egypt officials said, the latest in a series of deadly or damaging air travel incidents involving Egypt. The officials said no bomb was found after the Airbus and its passengers were searched by explosives experts and the plane took off for the Chinese capital four hours after it landed in, the t in a town about 840 kilometers west of Uzbek capital, Tashkent. According to the officials, an anonymous caller telephoned security agents at the Cairo airport to say a bomb was on board Egypt Air Flight 955, which had 135 passengers and crew aboard. The extremely light sentence of a Stanford University student athlete convicted in the rape of a young woman has sent shockwaves across the country since the punishment was handed down. Brock Allen Turner is a former Stanford University swimmer who was convicted of sexually assaulting a young woman behind a dumpster after he met her at a party. Victim, victims' rights advocates could not believe it when the 20-year-old was sentenced to just six months in jail instead of the maximum 14 years behind bars. The judge cited the fact that Turner had to forfeit a swimming scholarship to, to this prestigious university. 
The Guardian discovered that Judge Aaron Persky is a Stanford alumnus and will face a recall led by M Michelle Dober, a law professor at the prestigious California Institute of Higher Learning. Additionally, a Change.org petition has more than 240,000 signatures demanding the judge to be removed from the bench. Today's odd news of the day comes from California highways where a multi-vehicle crash left the highway covered in onions. A truckload of onions spilled at mid-morning Tuesday on the westbound side of Interstate 10 in Yucaipa, about 70 miles east of Los Angeles. Two other vehicles were also involved. The California Highway Patrol says the truck driver was taken to a local hospital for treatment of minor injuries. We're pretty sure there were lots of tears. No tears over the, over the forecast, though. Here's Kennedy Lamb with the weather. We're dealing with some on and off rain showers early for our Wednesday, and those showers can become more spotty as the afternoon and evening move on. We could see a quick thunderstorm as well. The real story for today will be the wind. Northwest winds could blow from 25 to 30 miles per hour. That wind is the result of a cold front that's been inching its way from Canada the last 24 hours. It will drop our temperatures into the upper 40s tonight. For Thursday, we'll see some early clouds and then sunshines with temps in the upper 60s. But again, there will be a real coolness with the windy conditions. Friday's weather looks great as temperatures rebound into the low 70s with plenty of sunshine and winds die down. How about the weekend? Well, on Saturday, we feel some warmth again as the southerly flow of air comes into the area. We'll have a mixture of sun and clouds with temps in the low 80s. We could see a stray shower or thunderstorm. Actually, the chances of rain increase the further we get into the day. Showers remain Sunday morning with the gradual clearing on Sunday. Temps fall back into the upper 60s as the, as the winds shift from the northwest again. That's the forecast. I'm Kennedy Lamb. Golden State has won the first two games of the NBA Finals, both of those wins coming by double figures and with a few dominant stretches of basketball in there. Strange as it sounds, that has the Warriors feeling a bit uneasy. The champions know exactly how fast a series can change. Having just pulled off a mathematically improbable comeback from a 3-1 to, to one down against Oklahoma City in the Western Conference Finals. And even with the odds now stacked high against Cleveland in these NBA Finals, the Warriors say they cannot fall into the trap of thinking this series that resumes with Game 3 on Wednesday is already over. The NFL has engaged law enforcement to look into how its Twitter account was hacked by a post purporting that Commissioner Roger Goodell had died. Around midday Tuesday, a post went up on the league's official account that read, We regret to inform our fans that our commissioner, Roger Goodell, has passed away. He was 57. Followed by a hashtag and RIP. Manny Machado had no intention of taking a 99-mile-per-hour fastball in the back without retaliating. So when the inevitable occurred, the Orioles' young infielder charged to the mound with his fist clenched. Kansas City right-hander Jordano Ventura hit Machado with a pitch to spark the bench emptying fray, and the Baltimore extended the Royals' losing streak to a season-high six games with a 9-1 route Tuesday night. The Yankees also won, taking the first two games of four games against the Angels. The Mets dropped a doubleheader at Pittsburgh. Maria Sharapova has been suspended for two years by the International Tennis Federation for testing positive for the melodonium at the Australia Open. The ruling announced Wednesday can be appealed to the Court of Arbitration for Sport. The five-time Grand Slam champion was provisionally suspended by the ITF in early March when she announced at the news conference in Los Angeles that she failed the doping test in January. Finally, we would all wish Mexico senior Hunter Hellinger the best of luck this Friday as he competes in the New York State Track and Field Championship at CNS. Hellinger, of course, will be competing in the high jump as a Section 3 champion. That's it for sports. I'm Justice Dan. The calendar is just about run out. That is a school calendar. Local exams will finish up this week, and of course, Regents exams begin next Tuesday. Dinner dance ticket sales have been extended through this Friday, June 10th. Senior t-shirts are in and can be picked up in room 101. There will be a kayak trip this Friday, June 10th. 
There are still spots open. Please stop down at the pool and see Mr. Parker's for permission slip. Those students who need to come in for an afternoon regents or exam, you must sign in at the main office with Mrs. Yost for a bus. Well, that's it for us for this school year. We really appreciate you joining us on a regular basis these last several months. We've tried to provide you with some information and news that we hope you found important and useful. On behalf of the staff behind the Tigers News, have a great summer. I'm Alexis Richer. And I'm Abby Garrett. And I'm Justice Dam. And I'm Morgan Lindanda. And I'm Kennedy Lamb. Have a great summer.